I watched this dude change his life, man. Just growing up being asleep here with my brother. Just wanted to be a different kid and have fun. Make my mom, my grandma proud. Stay out their way for the news, the music videos, actually being in motion pictures. Just wanted to think outside the box and be different than everybody else. For the fans and the supporters. Wanted to build my own brand. Man, the Barbie is one of the most inspirational people I've known. The man runs marathons. He raises great kids. He gives the young homies advice. No problem. I shall transform your hair. Create a masterpiece. I am an artist with a pile of scissors. My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop First from the barbershop, flop in the beauty salon My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop I got a show where you can listen and view My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop Bring him flowers and stylus together with the sister salute My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop One cut, two cut, two cut, four Spending hours in salons on your hairstyle. For oh, the Lord protects his barbers and he makes the stubble grow. Caesar! Well, well, well. Look who it is. <laughs> it is me back. Houdini, I appeared here at the Scissor Salute Show. I'm really happy, honored to be here next to my partner, Yvette. Scissor Salute, thank you for joining us. My co my host, actually. You are the lead host hey, today. Listen, we're both hosting. Yeah, but I'm not you. Oh, stop it. I'll, stop I'll tell it. you a quick but story about this nice. guy. He almost made me trip as soon as I saw him. So he definitely has some magic tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> that was too funny. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I definitely was not funny. ready. No, nah, that's good. I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to meet you for the first time, yeah, honestly. You, um, too. you go by Yvette, but you also, uh, your, your stage name is uh, Blades and Blush, right? Not stage name. I'm not a stripper. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I thought your platform name. Yeah, okay. okay. My name is Yvette, and <laughs> my Instagram is Blades and Blush. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, guys, for those that don't know who I am, I am Houdini Style on Instagram. Um, that is my stage name. I am a platform <laughs> artist. <laughs> So I'm happy to be here. I'm hoping that you guys learn from uh, you know some stuff that we have to show you today. Uh, we have some great things going on. But before our, uh, we continue, uh, I just want uh, Yvette to go over some stuff from last week because I wasn't here. I want to know. Yeah, last week was a great show, dope show. We had so many people in the building. We had a full house. Um, first, we'd like to send a salute to Miguel of Del Valley Cuts for stepping in and being our host for last week. Last minute, he did a wonderful job, and I only hope to keep everybody as entertained as you did last week. So, sis, salute. Yep, 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 yep. Sis, salute. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and we had showcasing, I'm a little biased, um, Lou the Fagician. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. I'm just a little biased. No, no relation. I, I like him. <laughs> you do? I like him too. I know. You You love him. <laughs> oh, you better love him. Um, so he came in here and he cut um, and he showed us his fade style. So that was dope. Yeah, Lou's the best. Yeah, thanks. Um, we also had calling from Baltimore, Maryland, um, Heaven. The Bear Goddess, and she's actually, she'll be calling in a little later on. She's joining us again. We enjoyed her segment. And she specializes only on beards, fellas. So if you want to get your beard game up, follow Heaven. And wow. she is at the Bear Goddess, um, beard underscore goddess on Instagram. So check her out. And then I happen to be in the building as well. Ooh, ooh, so this is a salute for this is a salute show for having me on again. I'm thankful for that. And we also had Delore, and he is the owner of the Barber Bar, and he is always pro barbers on Instagram. Check him out. He's a vendor, so he'll um, be helpful for all your barber needs. Um, and that is always pro barbers again on Instagram. Check him out. And then we also had Clay. Um, and that's at Clay Sculpts, and he is a trainer who 
I was amazed by because I actually sat next to him. We had a conversation. Like a personal trainer or, or a hair trainer? Yeah, no, he's a well, personal trainer and he's a barber as well. But we sat and had a conversation. Um, he has made a tremendous transformation. If you go on his Instagram page, you'll see his before and after photos. He's actually a vegan now. Um, oh but he, you know, we had a conversation about going vegan. I thought about it. Um, then I was a little, you know, scared. And then I saw... Um, that documentary last night, What the Health, what the health? Mm -hmm. and that was that was deep, so that kind of changed my mind, so he influenced me, and so did What the Health, so check him out, and he's at Clay Sculpts on Instagram, and then we also had Patrick Chiquita in the building, and he's here with us tonight, um, we'll, we'll see if he can showcase for us, if he has time to take out of his busy schedule to showcase for <laughs> us, so we hope he can do that. That's, uh, hold on, I just want to say that it's, uh, 50, 51, 51 years, years right in the barber game. Wow. <laughs> yes. Sis salute to that. Sis salute, Chiquita. And then we also had Dante and Brent, um, the financial guys in the building. I know their segment will be coming up, what, every week now yeah, soon, every, every right? Every month. Once a month oh, we'll once be having a, month. a financial segment with uh, Dante and Brent. So. Make okay. sure you stay tuned for that. All right. So, scissor salute to them. And scissor salute to everyone for joining us. And what do we have this week? All right. Well, this week, guys, we have uh, showcasing um, from Finnish Touch Barbershop located in Brooklyn. We mentioned him before. His name is Patrick, a.k.a. Chiquita. And that is uh, Washington on Instagram. It's Washington C6067. Um, he's going to be uh, showcasing for us in just a little bit. And uh, on stage right now from Armani and Alex Barbershop, located in Melville, New York, that's going to be Samantha Jean. And uh, her Instagram handle is Samantha Jean Hairstylist. Um, also calling in is going to be student barber at the All-American Academy, uh, Shap. Shap. Yep, and that is uh, Shap the Barber on Instagram. Also, owner of Design and Hair Salon located in Pigeon Ford, Tennessee. Uh, we're going to have Steve. Fee Steve Van Diver. Does that sound Diver. right? Van Diver. Van Diver. Okay. And that is hair.guy.steve. That's his Instagram handle. And, and he is watching. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching very carefully. <laughs> 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 that was too funny. So uh, we look forward to hearing from these people. Um, is Heaven going to be uh, calling in? No, no, no. Heaven, heaven no. won't be calling in? No, we were just doing a test. Uh -huh. the test. All right. So for that's, uh, for that's our segment for today, guys. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I've been on the, uh, to the Scissor Salute show. And I'm honored to be back. Um, I definitely uh, gave up one of my jobs. You know, I definitely have a lot of jobs. But I gave up <laughs> one that, was, uh, that I was doing. many hats. Um, that's true. I was working at the Art of Shaving. Um, and I was working there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, and every other Saturday. And so, you know, I, I did almost a year over there. I learned a lot, uh, especially f f men's shaving, men's grooming. I, I learned so much. And, you know, I've had another opportunity, and I decided to retire from that from from and that what, business and what's it like working in a in a in a place like that? Cause well, it's a very corporate business. I mean, you know, the thing is, is that you know, when you're working at a a a, a, a place like that, we call it we call it a, a barber spa. Um, you you know, you're given 30 minutes, and you have to stick to that 30 minutes. You start going over, you know, 45 minutes for a haircut, you're liable to get written up. You know, mm, so it's a oh little really? different. Yeah, so it's a, it's a it's very very strict in that sense. But you know what? It's a good way to challenge yourself to make sure that you really stay on time and really you know make sure that doesn't happen. And you know, unfor I mean, unfortunately, I'm not working there anymore. But you know, I, I did enjoy it. I did you know uh, become very good friends with the manager, and it was a great experience overall. Wait, so. <clears throat> No matter what walks into that door, mm -hmm. you have a half hour to cut it? Well, yep. 30 minutes are, are designated for a haircut, uh, 30 minutes for a shave. Okay? So if it's a cut and shave, you get an hour. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. All right? But you know what? I mean, sometimes you do have challenges where someone comes in with a lot of hair, and <laughs> you have to get it done in a timely fashion because they're booking 30 minutes right after that. So if you start to fall behind, customers get upset. Now, these customers are also paying top dollar for their haircut. So you want to make sure that, you know, you don't get them upset. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah, so it was a very nice experience. I mean, I really um, did enjoy it. Um, right now, I'm working uh, at Annex. I'm located over at uh, Americ Road in Belmore. That's going to be called Annex Beauty and Beards. Um, uh, this is a salute to the owner, Crystal. 
uh, for, for, for yeah, so the salute. Uh, she she actually uh, you know came up to me with the opportunity and and I took it. So that's where my full time spot is now, and um, I'm here on on the salute shows. And, uh, on uh, Mondays now. And is that the the Annex Beauty and Beard is, uh -huh. is that a salon and what, what is it is that? a yep it's a it's a beauty salon and a place where also men get their beards done. So okay, I'm okay. I'm, so we may have to be putting in a uh, phone call to uh, Heaven, the beard goddess, to come up and maybe do some classes. That would be really really great. In fact, uh, tomorrow I will be starting for the staff that is at you know currently at the Annex uh, Beauty and and uh, Beards. I'm going to be doing an education class. So the girls that want to learn how to do men's hair, I'm going to be actually doing a class tomorrow morning at 10, from 10 to 12, and we're going to be doing that for eight weeks oh, until man. they become masters. I need to get into that class. Hey, listen, you got the <laughs> best one right there. You better really watch him. <laughs> Luther Fajish is the best, man, really he is. What about these hats, though? Oh, my goodness. All right, so, guys, I want to talk you know, about something that I'm very honored to, to have uh, come up with, and this was just an idea that came up to me. Um, where I decided that uh, <laughs> I, what's, what's better but to put uh, some oh, some scissors, scissors on uh, hats. So guys, they, they uh, these you can find these on my website uh, www.houdinistyle.com, and um, it's just really great. I have them in all different kinds of colors. I just came out with them, so they're new on the market. Um, they're black. This is silver. a real scissor too. It is a real share. Yep, that definitely a real share. Um, they open and close, so you can kind of position them to any kind of. Uh, any kind of position that you like, you know, whatever whatever way you want to position them, it's up to you. Okay, I like but and they're very comfortable hats, guys. So according to you know, if you like gold, we got gold. If you like black on black, you don't want to you want to be a little more discreet about it. Well, we have that <laughs> as well. So, and everything is one size fits all. So it's kind of cool, guys. You know, so I'm really happy and honored so to packed. be giving you know come up with something new for the uh, for the industry for the stylist and barber industry. And uh, hopefully it'll be a big hit, you know. Oh, well, you have your logo on here. Yeah, you're that's, doing big things. I hey, feel listen, like I'm I, trying my best. I shouldn't listen. even be sitting here. No, nah, stop you. it, stop it. You know, I'm honored <laughs> that you're here with me. So it's really, really great. So, guys, for anybody who's interested in these hats, you can find them on my website. Um, you can also get some information on my Instagram, which is at Houdini Style. Um, and you know, there's more things that have come, and you know, I'm definitely being blessed. Um, here, you can put mm -hmm. these over there on that side if you want, guys. Take them but this, I want to talk to you guys about count this. Them, Harry, count them, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Count them, Harry. Count them, Harry. Juice too happy to I'm take them saying. to the side. Just, oh, you know, man. just keep them safe over here. She is too funny. <laughs> yes. We're talking about the artist review, all right? We are talking about the time limited because when I went to Atlantic City, I do a course with them. So he was on the moment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, guys, here, real quick, I want to talk to you guys. Uh, uh, I want to talk to you guys about something that you know is very important to me, and I'm very honored to to actually have been on. Uh, see these two twins here, guys, for this front cover. I was the one who cut their hair for this photo shoot. So this is the first so time forever, you know, having my work on um, the cover of a oh, magazine, cool. and I'm really, really honored to have this. I mean, this was great. These are two twins. Um, they live in Bushwick. We <clears> found them at a model call. And I mean, I just really am happy to have been a part of this. Um, there is an article in here, guys, and this is the men, men's grooming magazine for the summer edition, which is really, really nice. Um, if I can find that page that I had before, but I can't find it right now. Come on, come on. And this always happens, right? Here we go, guys. <laughs> guys, look how nice this came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. This is a great photo shoot. Um, I want to thank Luis Alvarez, who is the director of this whole uh, collaboration here. Uh, Nicole Gary, she did a great job with the styling work. Uh, Wanda Alvarez for doing the makeup on them and just making sure that they're they're they're, um, they're all set in regards to their, their uh, the way they were dressed. And really, it just came out so great, you know. And I'm happy to be on a scissor salute, showing you guys that you know what it is possible. Coming from someone who really struggled to you know um, in this hair world to really having my work on the front cover of a magazine is just scissor amazing. So scissor you. salute to that. Just you know, to that. You know, well earned, well earned. You know, so it's it's not the, it's, this is not the uh, this is not the 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 end. I'll tell you that much. It's not the end of this, and you know, you'll continuously keep me uh, keep seeing me evolve. And it's just, uh, that's what it's all about. So you're getting started, but don't worry. You can be at this caliber oh, also. thank you. Oh, yeah. so, See, that's the perfect you. person to talk to. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, I'm telling you. So, so I'm really honored, guys. You know, and for those out there that are struggling, I want to say don't give up. You know, if the ones that give up are the ones that, that are weak. If you're not weak and you're strong, you just keep working at it. Keep perfecting that skill and you will get better. And you can reach to this caliber where so your work can be on a front that. cover of a magazine. So, so salute once again, guys. And, um. It's just a great thing, really. I just wanted to share that with you guys. 
So uh, how can we get that? Where, where do we get? How do we get, get this? Um, you, uh, this is the business of uh, men's grooming magazine. You can actually uh, look this up, um, and you can get a subscription to this. Um, you just have to go to their website. Okay. Okay, and just sign up for them. It's the uh, the bi the men's grooming business uh, magazine. Okay. Did, did okay. you let them know how to, they can get the hat? You yeah. Oh, well, well, if you want to talk about it again, bring them over again, right, man. Let, oh, my God. I'm so honored about that. Thank you, Steph, bro. I appreciate this. <laughs> Guys, these are really, really cool. They come in trucker fit. They come in also snapback. Um, you can find these on www.houdini.houdini.com. <laughs> All right. That's my website, guys. All right. So there you go. Take them back. All right. And uh, what do we have? Who We have somebody very special up there. And I had uh, the honor to interview her earlier. Her name is Samantha. Uh, Samantha yeah. is, is definitely talented. She's mic'd up. So. Oh, she's just getting mic'd up? I'm going to mic her up now. So All right. So, so Samantha is somebody, I, you know, I, when I spoke with her, I, I kind of was uh, very inspired by her because, you know, I, I'm a barber, but I'm also a, a hairstylist also. You know, I went to cosmetology school. I, I, um, I went to barber okay. school first. Okay. Is that the route that you would suggest? Is um, barber school first? <sighs> I would say, yeah, if you're really interested in getting into barbering, just make sure that you find a really good school that's the quality. The school that I went to is now out of business mm. because they weren't really doing the right thing. So I think if you can find a good quality barber school, definitely feel free to do that and you know get your certification, get your apprentice license, and get out there. But um, you could only learn so much from barber school, I, and that's where I took it to another level, and I decided to go to cosmetology school. Cosmetology okay. school is definitely going to open up new avenues in regards to how to uh, style hair differently, uh, how to use different scissors for different types of hair textures. So there's just so much that you can do, and having both those under your belt is just going to create just a, an, a dynamic type of uh, barber stylist. And I don't think anybody can do, you know, this, do that without having barbering and styling uh, right. combined. Especially now where there's like a huge shift into not only cuts, but color as well. So you see a lot of people like getting both. So barber school doesn't teach you that, well, right? No, absolutely not. No, they're not going to teach you anything in regards to color. No, okay. Um, and that's a really huge industry. Everybody knows that the... the the uh, color right industry, too. you can okay. make thousands Ooh. and thousands mm -hmm. of dollars, yeah. you know, so that's just another avenue. And I, what I like about Samantha is that she has opened up all those, she has become a master at all those avenues. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but she is versatile. The girls, this girl, you better watch out for her all right, Samantha. because you can bring anything to her and she will give you a good quality result. <laughs> a salute to you, you know, girl. so a salute no to pressure. Samantha. No <laughs> I can't wait to interview you. All right, we're good. We're ready. All right, Samantha. All right, so. Are you ready? Okay, no, okay. Got her mic up. Hey. <laughs> so she's ready. Samantha, are you ready? I think so. Hi. All right. all right, perfect. So this is our model, Jessica. As you can see, she has a top on. Um, she does her own hair, so she did this herself, and she has a full head of hair extensions. She has two packs of tape and extensions, so she's gorgeous, but we're going to turn her around. You can't really, I mean, in all honesty, you really can't see them, you know? You wouldn't think she had two packs of hair in. You wouldn't think, like, there's anything going on here. So I wanted to show today the versatility of the tape-ins, um, and I wanted to show how they really are safer than people are saying. Um, a lot of people have experienced their hair either, I don't even want to say breaking off or falling out because that, that isn't really what should be happening. Um, a lot of the time it could be too tight, it could be improper placement, and that's where you're having those issues. Other than that, you should be able to do everything you could do with <coughs> your natural hair. So I'm going to take her hair out. I'm going to just quickly go over the placement just so you could see how you can achieve this versatility you know, yourself as a stylist if this is something that you are offering. Um, so that maybe your clients can have a little bit of a better peace of mind and know that their hair really is safe and they're okay. So we're going to take this bun out, which Jessica did herself. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as maintenance goes, the best thing you can do is make sure that you're timely. So six to eight weeks is as like long as you really want to push it when you are going about your maintenance. All right. I also want to show, if we could, oh, sorry, buddy, you really did good. We're okay. I know, she's a dancer, so she does her own. Okay. Now, two packs of hair is thick. Like, when the bun comes down, I feel like you'll be like, oh, wow. Okay, it's a lot. It's a lot of hair. Okay. I'm going to turn her around. Okay. 
And it's like a wild mane right now. We just took it out of the bun. Now, you can see her own. This is her natural hair. This is about as long as her hair is. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm, like, not even paying attention to what it is. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> so, the underneath, if you want to see. it, You know, it's really not a very coarse strand. It's a fine head of hair. But it's strong. Hair is strong. So, we really shouldn't have. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is where we're at. Now, what I'd like to do is turn this into a quick style that we can definitely wear either as a bridesmaid. It's something that you could dress up for a bride. Um, and you really won't see the extension. So that'll be really great. Now, she has extensions all up in the top, too. I want to show from the side. So we cut. I specialize in going ahead and blending the extension. That's a big part of it. You don't necessarily want to cut the client's hair. So a trick that somebody taught me was that you shake their own hair, like, out. This way, when you're going in with your razor or whatever method you're going to cut with, you've given the client peace of mind that you're not going to cut any of their existing hair. They're, right, they're already concerned with the amount of hair that they may or may not have. Jessica's got a full thick head of hair, so that's not a concern here, but some clients really don't want you to cut anything because they've already got an issue perhaps. So that's something that you want to do when you're blending. Um, if you take a look at the bond, the most important thing is that you're not putting them too tight. So this is the tape in itself. I don't know if we can see this. Yes, yeah, Cool. So when I put it in, a lot of people are going to take the section of hair and they're going to think, okay, I want the client to get the most time, so I'm going to make this nice and tight for them. Like, I want it to be good. The, the client is going to get the six to eight weeks regardless, so you don't want to make it tighter. All that's going to do is decrease the mobility, and it's going to increase tension on the existing hair. So what I do is I take a section about as thick as the extension itself, and you're going to take your first piece of the sandwich, and I'm not like beating a dead horse. Everybody, anybody that's doing tape-ins, you, you've seen it. I don't need to go through that. So you take the first piece, you lay it under, OK? I'm not over-directing. I'm not elevating. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just, you know, point of growth, and you're just going to put it down. Now you're going to lay your next piece right on top. And we're not going to go, you know, right up to the scalp. You want to leave it a quarter inch is OK. You know, it can have a little drag. I mean, Jessica, how long ago did we do your tapes? Now, it was probably yeah. a solid maybe like a week if that no, a week and a half probably a good two weeks okay so two weeks so if you really look two weeks is a significant amount of time you're doing six to eight weeks you're a third of the way through you've only come down a very small amount and I you know and yeah. she had it up in a wig she's a theater person as well so you know I really I really love this method and it really does allow a protective well, barrier. I like the method where you're doing because you can no strain on this growth of the Exactly, area. exactly. And you it away so it wouldn't get no pressure and it look natural. Exactly. And right. And you want it to go with the natural lay. So now when I actually am installing and I'm going through my rows, like I'll show you, you want to keep the rows very clean. Um, and when I'm going through, I'll actually be like neurotic and annoying, like surprise. I'll be like, is this one hurting? No, is this one hurting? And my clients are like, no, Sam, it doesn't hurt. But I'm like, no, shush, just answer me because later is when you're going to have an issue. So I always ask right away. Another thing when I observe, when you separate, put your finger, your index It's straight finger, rows. It carry away all the pressure and the tension. Oh, right, so the yes. The customer would be really relaxed mm -hmm. and the scalp wouldn't feel like, you know? Correct. Now, I want you to notice, like, Jessica, we did not style her hair today. She did this on her own. So this is how she's been washing it and wearing it. Um, I just put my finger through and I made, like, a clean. I found my rows again. Like, you should be able to find all your rows. It should be sporadic. It shouldn't be, oh, I have one here and here. You want to have clean, like a brick laid pattern. So that's another thing that really will help the client keep, um, you know, keep representing your product well. You know, because if they can't manage this and it's looking crazy, that's not going to get, you know, anybody, any clients or anything. So we want Jessica to be able to, like, shake her head out and know that her hair is, for all intents and purposes, like, going to be okay and look good. So as far as the style goes, to segue, I like to find just some type of natural part. I'm going to use the camera. This is good. Do you like this part? Yeah, it looks fine. Awesome. I always like to check with the client because if you're doing brides, just to segue to brides, 
all a lot of brides use extensions so it goes together but they do not know that they don't like the part until the style is complete oh yeah I know we should have so once you've yeah once you've gone ahead and created a beautiful shape and everything is balanced and everything is good that's when they say, oh, you know what, but like I really just want it like a little side. So I make them commit to the part. Like don't be afraid to have them say like, yes, I like this. So what's good about the extensions is we're able to cheat a little bit and use them to anchor whatever it is that we're trying to achieve. So we don't necessarily have to do as much teasing at the base in the back. Oh, I'm screaming into the mic. Because, you know, you have the tape in to lock into the pin. So what I'm doing right now because a lot of brides like a more natural volume, is I'm just doing a couple little teasings right at the base. So it looks like a lot, but it's gonna come down an awful lot. We're getting away from like the individual, like bump it up, 90s bump, and it's just the all over more voluminous look that brides have been asking for it from what I've seen. You know, obviously everybody's different, but for the most part. So I'm gonna leave this crazy. He's a genius. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, you're the best. I love you. All right. So we're going to take the front and we're going to bring it around because we're not really worried about it right now. I like to work in sections. That's how we stay organized and we stay quick. So I'm going to do a side bun. There was a picture that came up on the screen and it had a braid into a side bun. It was brown hair. A lot of brides are gonna show you this on Pinterest. It's like a big Pinterest thing. So what I realized is a lot of side buns, we go right for the ponytail. We go right to like making a ponytail on the side and going that route to anchor. I don't know if that's the best like way to go about it every time. I think sometimes, yes, the ponytail is great. But I really have found that if you look at the head and you map it out and I usually go I don't know if you can see like behind her ears usually good and it follows their neck I just do a small section and now we've got a ton of hair we have two packs of hair so we're good on that so you back home back home it doesn't matter what it looks like because it's going in and hers is long so don't worry about the tail you tuck it in and you pin it and you know I like how you're doing it because you're doing it in such a way you don't get, you can make in contact with the baby here you right so you're putting it and giving it the body so correct right so i'm using that for fullness thank you so now what we've done is instead of like using one of those donut hole things and mashing it and putting it there we've made it with the hair which is cool okay now we have that we don't have to worry about it now we'll go back i'm gonna flip you around you're just gonna like be spinning okay all right cool so i'm going to take a small section this is for the braid now, I'm just going to look at her head, and I'm going to say, all right, like this is a triangular piece, so I kind of want to make it balanced. So I'm going to go from here. Now, this point is where is going to be the top of my section. So I'm just going to draw a triangle now from here, right, and go like this. And I just did teasing, so you might have to, like, fight with what you did. Normally, I make my braid section first, then I tease, but it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. lose sleep over it. So now we're going to bring it over, and just for the time being, we're just going to get rid of this really quick. Okay, hold on. Give me two seconds. Oh, thank you. All right, we're just going to, like, make this be over here. We're going to use that braid section. Okay. Now, I don't know how many people still use a Marcel curling iron, but I like exclusively use a Marcel curling iron so it's like whatever you want to do people do it with a flat iron people do it with a wand I tend to like to use the Marcel because I feel like it just the client can't do it so that's one thing that I have that I can say okay this is something that I can do for you that you maybe can't do for yourself so that's the only reason because I need whatever I could get I'll be honest with you so I'm just gonna put in a nice curl we're not gonna go nuts because she really like you know it's going to be entirely pinned up, so we don't actually have to worry about it holding. And just do like a little curl, nothing crazy. Okay. 
I'm like listening to Chiquita, what he's saying. He's saying such nice things about me. Chiquita, yeah, no, I can't. You're making me embarrassed. You're making a blush. I know. I'm Samantha. Chiquita, I can't. Where are you from, Chiquita? That's true. That's correct. You see when you go and do the cosmetology, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Anybody ready to learn? I, I lend you the book. <laughs> I bring back a set of scissors. I bring back some scissors with Cotty Alpina. I was telling you all here. These scissors is run you when you bring it to a video and you watch it and you're going to get it to $1. Can they hear Chiquita? Like, I'm wondering, can everybody hear what Chiquita's saying? Because I'm being quiet, but... Oh, okay, so never mind. I'm sorry, Chiquita. I thought. <laughs> what? And you say something just now earlier to somebody, to people watching. He's saying... Okay. Can we get Chiquita on mic? Because he sounds so wonderful. Mm -hmm. He's... Here, I'll just show you guys this while Chiquita's narrating from me. They're going to give you a microphone. And also, I don't know if people... <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. As well, what's Samantha Jean? My doing? godmother is going to be so happy yeah. that you guys are calling me Samantha Jean. First yeah. of all, I what's just Samantha Jean is that doing now? She's going to cry. She's going to cry. She's giving the air body. She's giving the complete air style of body. Right? With a 90 degree from the from the from the ridge to the next one you call it 90 degree. Right. But what I like with the bones which she set on it from half of the A's from the 45 degree. She giving it a raised shape and running the cord in line with the growth to the ear. Oh, she said. That's the correct. I'm actually attached. doing the curl away from the yeah, face. face. Yeah. I know. I love that you noticed, <laughs> Chiquita. You're the best. You're making me <laughs> smile so big. I love it. I can't take it. Oh, good. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. Time flies when you're having fun, people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. But Odini is shoot what you said. And your words have more than power. And she's somebody where every barber and a dresser got to watch. Keep a close eye on Samantha. And this is not a joke. What's Samantha doing? Because she loves it. It's a spiritual, practical, cultural, and something which she love. And you know, God bless you, Samantha. Oh, thank you, and keep up the good you. works. Oh my God. Salute to the, uh, to the station and salute to the <laughs> Scissor Salute Show. Oh, Scissor so Salute to you, Chiquita. Yeah. You're splendid. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to curl it quick. Nothing crazy. And then what's fun is when you... Is my power off of this? Okay, good. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, yeah, and then, like, when you're doing your bun, like, let's just say you have a big bridal party, right? And someone's being picky, and then next thing you know, your time is, like, very limited. Take bigger sections when you're creating your work, when you're creating your bun. You know, this way you don't get so caught up on the detail of that. You're able to make something very nice, you know, that's maybe a little simpler, but... It's going to be polished. It's going to be nice. So. Now, I don't know if. Did you set back what? Who said this? Um, the red the next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait. So people can say, like, what they're seeing. and yeah, Oh, this is cool. This is a cool <laughs> thing. <It's> life. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Jesus, Mary. Life and I make an okay face? Like, am I all right? No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Aww. No, this is so fun. Thank you for having me. I came and I saw Nadine Donovan, and she's like my most biggest, like I want to be like her when I grow up, when I become an adult. <laughs> I will love her. I just love her so much. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. I had met her because I had asked a question about something she was doing, like a highlight little video clip on Instagram, and I asked if it was a base break that she did. And she was like, oh, she answered me. I just was like a random person that sent her a message because I just had a question. And, you know, next thing you know, she answered me. And then she was moving to Long Island from Australia to Huntington, which is where I'm from. And the rest was history. Now we buddies. Mm -hmm. So now what's cool is we've made a curl. So we have some nice hair here we could play with. We have some nice hair here we could play with. This is irrelevant for now. Now what we're going to do is just try to create a nice pretty shape. 
which I think we kind of have. Yeah, that's going to be all right. Now we can make a braid. Now this is another quick trick. If you have someone with super thick long hair, and I said before and I got off track. So you start off, you got 11 girls, you're running late. This one's got thick hair. How can we get it up quick? Another way besides doing bigger sections is to make braided sections. Mm -hmm. And then you pull the braids up. Okay. And my second family growing up was Trinidadian, so I learned how to braid very young. And I'm so forever grateful to them. Because or else, like, what would I do with my livelihood? <laughs> like, I couldn't, <laughs> like, what would I do? Okay, so we pull this out, make it big, and then you can just kind of, like, twist it and pin it. And, like, okay, so when you're pinning, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see anything of what I'm doing. So now where you, it's easy to pin. Where you're holding it is where you put your pin. So I'm holding it there. It's going to stay now. You put it like a bow. That's mm -hmm. good. So oh, when you take you. it out, yeah, you get the body and the shape very and very everything. Is it tight? Yeah, is it hurt? Yeah. And I always say to people. No, it doesn't hurt, but I feel like it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to tell you something. I say to every person when I put the first pins in, I'm like, is this hurting you? And then I make a joke. I'm like, oh, don't be a hero, you know, because later it's going to really hurt. That shows them that I'm concerned. It makes them feel like I care about them. It makes them feel like, you oh, know. Yeah. Right, because we're all, I hate to say it, but we're a dime a dozen. Like, if I'm not going to do your hair, somebody else will, and they'll honestly probably do it better. Like, I'm not any kind of amazing stylist that doesn't exist already, you know. But what sets us apart is the client's impression of it, you know. So you really want to make sure you're doing the best for them at all time. And that's what's going to set it apart. That's my two cents. Okay, so this is our part. Where was our braid? Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. No, that's so sweet. Yeah, tell her. So we're just going to quick kind of put this up. Just nice. As, as Udina was explaining earlier, this is somebody to watch, and I watch it. You guys are so and sweet. She's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. She's good. Okay. I don't know, not good to watch, but y'all do a style for you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you're going to see what you're going to see. That's it. No I can't make you any promises. Thank you. Uh, we have some fans out there. It's all right. I have no idea. Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie, that's her mom. Hi, Bonnie. Did you, did you say Bonnie? Bonnie, yes. I love her. Hi, that's Bonnie. her mom. <laughs> okay. Salute to you. So really quick, <laughs> this is my favorite part. We're going to do really super quick because I know I probably have like no time left or negative time. Oh, perfect. I can do seven. Oh, we can relax then. Okay. Oh. I can be calm. So this little braid, I'm doing super tight, but straight. Like, I'm keeping the strands very straight when I'm pulling it. I'm not twisting it at all because it's the tiniest thing of hair, and you're like, oh, my God, Sam, that's going to look like a worm. Like, what are you doing? That's ugly. But I'm going to pull it out, so that's why it has to be straight or else it's going to get crazy. And I'm like touching you with my body. I'm but sorry, buddy. Like I'm like full contact with my model right now. I'm sorry, buddy. Full contact. She likes it. <laughs> She's lucky. Right? All right, cool. And her hair, okay, blonde models always make your work look better. Because their hair is just pretty. <laughs> All right. You did it, buddy. Yeah, buddy, right? It came together. That's cool. It feels good. It feels very secure. That's what you want. And you know what? Pull some tundrals down. And then I always try to map my little tundrals out. And I like to make it, because sometimes, you know, when you pull them down and it just looks like not the right pieces. So what I go with is their baby hair. And I just try to, like, pull it until I get something. Now I have something long. That's all. And then I try to go to the next corner. I try to use the corners. I try to map out their own head, kind of. And Jessica has a lot of baby hair, so it's fun. Okay, cool. Pull more. Okay, great. Now we have wispies. <laughs> who, who has a problem with baby hair? Because I have the best gel. I have the best gel. It is called, okay, don't make fun of me. This gel, this gel is called African Super Grow. You could get it at, I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this, but you could get it at Popcorn. It's amazing for your edge control needs. I even put it in my, I use it, like my curls, oh, you can't see me, I'm not even in the camera, I don't even know where I am. My curls are soft, it's gel. You wouldn't even know. It's the best. It looks nice. 
Thank you, but for edges, it's like a hard thing. So, all right, so this is just a little bun bun. It's cute. We'll go to that braid and then we'll be done. But you see, it's like really, I mean, honestly, I've been talking and like really putzing around. Let's see. So it really doesn't take long. You know, it's just about maximizing your time using the braids, using the bigger sections. Like I really didn't putz around crazy and you still do have a lot of detail. Thank you. And then for the bangs, whoop, try not to knock the whole thing over. I try to just make her reminiscent of like any Disney princess I ever thought of. She uh, looks like a princess. Doesn't she just look at <laughs> it all you. the time? Like, oh, that was I mean, a treat. That'd be fun. You know, trying to get her I'll a job. the hair for it at least. Exactly. All right, now we're going back to the braid, which will be like the best part, and then we're done. You did great on time, buddy. Thanks, man. So now, with this braid, I don't know if we can make it so we can kind of see it. Now tilt your head. Thanks, buddy. So when you did your braid, I did it going this way, and I did it very tight. Now I'm able to flip it with really no, like you're not going to get any weird pop-up. I'm not going to pull the first loop or the second one. I'm going to go to, like, the next third one, and I'm just going to pull it out from the sides. And that's why you wanted your braid to be straight, because the straighter your braid, the less little things you're going to get. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. And this one will be more piecier. Mm -mm -mm. This is a very relaxing part, like when I'm doing the bride and then I get quiet and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. This is like a very relaxing part for me. So don't ruin it. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and now we have like a thick braid. Okay, now we pull it. You could braid more down. And honestly, we can just leave it thin because it's cute, because why not? Not everything has to be the same every time. And I'm using silver bobby pins because really, everybody gets all fussy with the color of the bobby pin matching. If you're hiding the bobby pin, it shouldn't matter to me, I feel. This is cutish, right? Oh, buddy. I just realized I haven't looked like one time to see what we're doing. But this is her. She has a side cute bun. I think it's cute, right? And quick. So, and it's a ton of extension in here, you know? So the extension you can use voluminous, like you saw the potential in the volume, and then you see like you can shrink it down small, you know, to make it a cute little bridesmaid bun or whatever you want to do. That's it. Nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Yay. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being my model. Come in. This was fun. This will be like when you get married, we're going to do. Oh, he's just supposed to? Sorry, I'm still futzing with it. Cool. Oh. Good? Thanks. Sweet. Are we done? Can I You're welcome, buddy. You look great. You look lightly tousled. I love it. Lightly tousled. Lightly tousled. Natural volume. <laughs> Can I clean up my stuff? Oh, cool. Check, check. Check, check. 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 Right. Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. buddy, I don't hate it. I love it. <laughs> it's pretty. All right, so the salute. That was Samantha. Oh, What's the correct? She did a great job. Oh, and now you. we have. I'm so excited because I got to meet you last week, and I learned so much in that short time. We have Chiquita in the building. Chiquita, why do they call you that? Um, Chiquita comes because I used to play professional soccer for my country. I was Pretty fast. Your country is. I'm from a South American speaking country, Guyana. Okay. All right. Big up Guyana. Yeah. Salute to yes. salute yes. Guyana. Yes. Our salute to Guyana. Yes. Can you tell um, me how to do it again? I was proud to know that I no, born there and I, 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 I learned so much wrong. being in Guyana, being contented when you don't have the things yeah. mm -hmm. what you really need to put you to the next level, and you work with what you have. Wait, I don't know. I'm. And do I really have it's from there I learned to cut hair. 
how old were you? When I was ten at, at that time. Ten years okay. old. Ten years oh old. My God, you yeah. know, I said that yeah. when they said you were cutting for fifty-one yeah. years. Ten I'm years like, first old. of all, you don't look yeah. a day over forty. That's yeah. one. Yeah. And two, how how old were you when you started cutting? <laughs> so you started cutting. Yeah, at I was ten, 10 years old. And that time, I used to teach my mother scissors, which she used to cut cloth with, you know, and start cutting my brother and sister. Sometimes I used, most okay. of the time I used to yeah. me mess up the hair and uh, I used to <laughs> say to myself, nah, I got to do more better than that. And I try and, you know, with the razor blade, the razor blade used to smooth off everything like a plane, you know, and then I started lining the hair and I started getting better and better. But it's a, it's an honor being here with you, Samantha, so I could explain my craft, where I start from, mm -hmm. where I created from, and you know, to all the barbers them out there, you know, I want you to listen attentively because barbering is a very spiritual, practical, mm -hmm. and something what you love. It's not a, a overnight something we could just pick up like that. Some people bless with a gift to cut hair. Some people learn and do it year after year and get better and better. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about barbering, as Odini was saying, is it's something you got to love. Most of these schools, they don't teach you the in and out of barbering. Mm -hmm. They just teach you the practical part, the theoretical part. But the practical part is like, to me, barbering, the name for barbering is a sergeant. Because a barber, you know, you got to know to massage people's hair. Mm -hmm. You got to know to do the beard. You got to know to do the facial. You got to know that if a customer get him pain in his face with a bile on the neck, you use a tweeze um, tweeze it out, you put a peroxide that wouldn't get attention or the pain, you know, to carry away the pus from in the flesh of itself. Mm -hmm. And you liquidate that. But barbering is so serious, man. You you of yourself got to be yourself. In order to execute your experience about barbering, you got to really love it and love it and don't even put money in front of barbering. Because the money going to come. It's like lift clean and let your work be seen. And once you're doing good right. works out there, as for instance, Odinia creating some new caps. I already like the cap. Yeah, the, the, I like the hats. Them, hats. They're, they're real excellent. They're uncommon. Yeah, and it's something I would buy off of the top. Mm -hmm. So, but going back to the barbering, yes, to all you fellas out there, barbering is not no overnight game. It's a serious game. You got to show each each barber love. You got to when a barber know something, you help out your brother. Mm -hmm. You understand me? If he's sick, you go over there and they about his family. Barbering is togetherness and unity. And unity is strength. And strength is a foundation. And most of you barbers out there believe when you're cutting celebrity, you're better than another barber. <laughs> and when you see a barber on a show, you want a barber come and tell you how you and what you're doing. Instead, you come to the other barber and show him love and embrace him and show him love. Right. And I see that. Just being around you um, for these short periods of time, you're yeah. a you're a teacher. You have a special gift of teaching. You came in and you just became the teacher. So where does that love come from? That love come from my year in year out, and I said to myself, as I getting down in age, I gotta execute my experience to the youth because it's mm -hmm. all about. To be a good barber out here and stand up all day on your foot, you got to be healthy, number one. Mm -hmm. You got to give that God thanks and praise. You got to give thanks to people like, so far, who bring in barbers here to let the carry the skill to the next level. Mm -hmm. You can't buy the hand that feeds you. I come here the first time, and this is my second time, and the love that this registration shows me is relentlessly. So mm -hmm. I have to bring back. I have to give back. And most of the barbers who cut in the celebrity out there who think... You don't have to give back. No, they got a brown paper box show where we go and volunteer. Me, Clay, Darko, and I could all call out a name. We go and volunteer. And for that day alone when I left my shop, I don't watch and see how much money I left in. I just go and do what I got to do. Back to the That's because I'm going to get back in the long run. I'm going to open, open civil lining so for my kids then. So if God today or tomorrow I'm not here, my good name live on. So, mm -hmm. it's an honor being out here and you all giving me this chance so I could express myself about what barbering is all about. Barbering, when you get up in the morning, is give God thanks and praise that you wake your spirit and clear your sight. That you could go 
and own your daily bread in the right way. Mm -hmm. Now you got some barbers. They say they ain't getting money, they ain't making money, and the customer this and the customer that. No, you is the problem. <laughs> you, the barbers, is the problem because if you respect yourself, ex execute your ability the right way, your customer would see that it's a real profession and they would pay you the money. Don't come wrong over the thing and say that I'm bitching, but you ain't getting paid and get it. Keep your chair clean, keep your nails clean, mm -hmm. keep your mouth clean. You understand me? Suck some mint when you do uh, your customer. Form a nice, proper conversation. Play nice music. Pull your pants over your waist. Nobody don't want to <laughs> see what jeans you got on or what solder on the way you got on. You understand me? Respect. Respect the profession of barbering. Mm -hmm. It's not an overnight something. As you was asking me earlier, because I love barbering, and most of the time when my clientele come, they might say, you know, Mr. Patrick is my body. I say, what? I would cut the hair. They don't have to pay me. Mm -hmm. And I give them a bottle of wine and tell them have a happy body. And, you know, you're things good, like you're that. You're a good man. Yeah. You're a good man. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're so blessed. So what yeah. would you say has been the hardest part about barbering so far? Barbering so far as I heard um, Odini was talking very early on and make a lot of sense. That you got to be in tune with yourself, mm -hmm. spiritually, practically. And why do I say that? Why do you use that word? Because you got to love it. Yeah. You understand me? And when you love it, you come out every day and you execute it. You render your service to your clientele. All you've seen is your clientele. Then you come after. Mm -hmm. Once you put a smile on your clientele face, you win the whole battle. And why I call it a battle? Because every day, something you got to... Compete all day. You got to compete. It's not that you're competing with yourself, but you're making sure the customer... Satisfied. Satisfied. And another thing, thanks to the correction, and another thing when your customer satisfy, he going to tell Sam, and Sam and tell Yam, and Yam and tell Sweet Potato, and Sweet Potato and tell Edo. <laughs> and before you, you even look around, you start making money from East, West, right. and South. But it's not all about money. It's about your craft. Execute your craft to the highest level. You got a hungry for knowledge and barbering, I hungry for knowledge. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think because I got 51 years on in my belt that I know, know something? I know shit. Mm -hmm. Assume me with a verbal word. I know nothing. Every day you're learning something. Right. I could learn something from you, Samantha. I could learn something from, from Odini. I could learn something from um, Samantha. Samantha. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So it's a teaching universal right. circle. Learn from each other. You learn from each other. And in order to I get to the next level, I got to learn from you, I got to learn from you, and I got to learn from you. I'm going to learn from you. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we already yeah. talked about that. Now, I noticed that you have, like, this special massage that you do on the face. Where did that start? Um, I was watching, and there was... Odini was asking me very early, um, as, as my body clay said, you know, he said, oh, you know, big brother, I seen you working naked. And when I see you, you're like a professor. Mm -hmm. And at one night I was watching a picture, um, Casablanca with Humphrey Go Bogard when he go to shave, you know. And I see this old guy put a thing around his neck. And then he do his hand like this and then. From both to the face, left, right side, and he, with a flow, and with a flow. I said, damn. I said, this big guy is nice. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, I go and buy a mannequin. Okay. You know, I go and buy a mannequin, and it's from there I start from. I be creative. Mm -hmm. And it feel good because I just don't learn something. Right. And something really affected to my to my skill, mm -hmm. we're going to make I earn more money. And in order to get more money, you got to put in the time, mm -hmm. you got to put in extra work. As Odini was saying again, it's hard to shave. You got a, a time period, half an hour to cut. You can't go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Because they got customers don't make appointment. Right. You, they can't jeopardize their appointment. Mm -hmm. So, it's so loving that when I come here, it's a spiritual 
vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just feel good yeah. coming here. Definitely. Like today, my two bodies couldn't make it because Clay was out in D.C., you know, doing something pertaining to his profession. And Doko had to go and take care of his family. So in order that, I don't make um, that tell me, but because already he's offered my word, so I go and catch the train. And I'm up here with you all, guys. To share this knowledge. Thanks. I'm so thankful yeah. that you're here. Yeah. So thankful yeah. that you're here. Yeah. So if somebody wants to come and get a haircut by mm. Chiqui Da, where do we come and see you at? You come at um, 917 Albany Avenue between Church and Linden. Brooklyn. And the name of the shop, Brooklyn, and the name of the shop is Finished Touch. Okay. And you could make an appointment with me if you want to make it 2 o'clock. Nine o'clock, if you want to out of my bed, six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I will be there. Because God and my customer come first. Okay, okay. Then my wife, then my kids. Oh, okay. Because without my customer, I'm full of it. Yeah, the wife is the boss. Yes, Karen. I know that, Sick. but you know. <laughs> but the customer, because without the customer, I ain't going to make no money. Right, right. You understand me? And, and you got to, mm -hmm. yeah, you see. And you got to love your customer because I got customer when the Christmas come. And this is another thing, and I'm glad you asked me that question. Barbers. Barbers. Salute all the barbers around the world. Salute it's the very world. important that you give back to your clientele. Mm -hmm. You can't be keep taking and taking and you're giving back. You got some of your clientele that like to listen to gospel. You could go and get gospel CD for them. Mm -hmm. You got some clientele like reggae. You could give them reggae, give them a card, thank you thanking them out for supporting you during the years and give back. Now to all you barbers out there who are cutting all the celebrity and you believe you're too big to come and volunteer and cut the homeless here, well, listen to me, man. You better pay attention mm -hmm. because don't forget where you start from or else you're going to forget where you're going. Salute to the barbers. Say salute to Say that. Salute. 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 Now, you, see, you mentioned that because I yeah. saw it on Instagram, too. When is it? It's next Wednesday, right? Yeah, next th this coming Wednesday, um, 9, um, the 9th, okay. this week here, at 6, it starts at 6. So, mm -hmm. the West 135th Street, 31st, 6th and 7th Avenue. And all you barbers out there who are willing to learn, I could learn from me, you could learn from me. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would like to reckon with. The radio station, it puts all, most of the barbers where they are today. So don't forget, don't buy the hand that feed you. Do not forget. Mm -hmm. Without this radio station, all you barbers were cutting with the celebrity and this and that. Remember the, the radio station. They didn't pay me for saying that. I saying it. And anybody want to say something to me? Come and tell me. Come see Chiquita. Come see <laughs> Bendito es el mucho bueno, oh, well known as Chiquita. Oh <laughs> Come see me. Come see me because serious. <laughs> Most of you forget that it's this same registration. <laughs> this same registration. The address is Tarte Broadway, Massapequa. You start from here. Mm -hmm. Remember, I tell you. You forget where you start from. So you're going to forget where you're going. Have a blessed day, scissor salute. And good night to all the fellow Bob. Salute, salute to that. Salute. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the phone with a couple of the people that are going to call in, and they actually commended you on your interview. They said you're doing a wonderful job. So yeah. thank you, thank you. Thank and now you. we're actually going to um, see Chiquita make his way to the stage. Well, you I see everything man. just walking in out of me. I want a scissor salute. Lou the Fagician, for many yeah. things, for many Hi. things. Yes, but he tonight he came through in the clutch yeah. because, unfortunately, um, things didn't go the way Chiquita planned, so he yeah. didn't have his tools. Yeah. Lou went and got his tools, tools. so yes. Ch Chiquita can showcase tonight. So I definitely want to thank him for yeah. that. And, and for being the model, too. Yeah. He's actually going to be model. the model. Salute, no, no. The Another thing before I left the, this, the line, um, I bring back some nice scissors, so... Anybody interested, just check me out. Okay. They are real super, super sharp. From Guyana? No, no. From... Oh, from D.C.? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to show you how to use it because it's very sharp. And, hey, man, you're going to love it. And anybody willing to learn, you could always stop by. I give you a word of advice. Mm -hmm. You could call me up anytime. Anytime. Odini, you, you could call me up. 
Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I going to be there for y'all, man, be because... I just shop right yeah. early. <laughs> Anybody you know, Dini, who, who willing to learn to, mm-hmm. learn to cut hair and split ends, just check me. Razor blade, razor, straight razor. If there's... If they only cut with one hand, I teach them how to cut with both hands. Mm-hmm. Another thing, if they're willing to learn, like spread the razor blade, break it in half, put it on the scissors and tape it at the back here and the side here, I could teach them that live and direct. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. And you all have a blessed night, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you again for having so me. Salute. Yeah. So Salute. This is a salute. You're live. Hello, Scissor Short. Oh, how salute. are we doing tonight? We're great. Thanks. Thanks for calling in. Well, I'm happy to. I'm real excited, and uh, it's nice to be seeing y'all. Everything's going great. It's been a great show so far. Thank you so um, much. You're welcome. I, I guess I can start out by kind of introducing myself. I'm Steve Vandiver, Hair Guy Steve on social media, okay. uh, Instagram, and, and everything else. I'm from uh, a small but notorious town in East Tennessee. It's Pigeon Forge. It's the home of Dolly Parton, and it's a tourist town, and we have millions of people a year here. So um, I've been dressing hair for 42 years. Wow. wow. 42 years. That I'm 60 years old, and, <laughs> you know, the only time I've ever missed work is, is to be sick. You know, I mean, I, I love what I do, and uh, I, I think that we're very blessed to have shows like this that, promote not only barbers but hairdressers and everyone actually in the grooming field and uh, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine y'all is the this line of distinction that has been here for all these years no there shouldn't be any distinction if we're in the grooming field if we're touching people if we're working with people well, then we're all in the same profession no matter what we're doing Absolutely. you know it's just that simple um, I get real touchy about some things. I'm going, and I, you know, I'm pretty bold. You know, y'all, as, as you'll see tonight, uh, <laughs> I, I don't sugarcoat things. I think that when we sugarcoat things, we make it worse for people than telling the truth. You know, that's just the way it is. I have done this little thing every week called Hair Church for a while. I started out on, on Periscope when Periscope first started, and then I've morphed it into a group on uh, Facebook called Hairdressers. Uh, helping hairdressers, advice for hairdressers. There's about ninety thousand members in there. Oh wow! And I do it every I do it every Tuesday night, and um, you know it, it varies from week to week what I do. It's something maybe I've seen that has irritated me, something I have seen that maybe needs to be addressed, something I have 
heard that's bullying or something like this. And and like I said, no no holes barred for me um, when it comes to defending people or trying to help people. You know that that's just what it is. I right now I'm involved with several companies. I'm I'm ad, I mean an ambassador for Antidot Pro, which is a marvelous product that can be added to chemicals to ease and make it more comfortable, the burning, the stinging, for shaving the neck, for waxing the eyebrows, for, for so many things. It actually has antihistamine and antioxidant and anti-inflammatory qualities. And then I also educate and, and, um, and an ambassador for a company called California Glam. We just got through spending two years, four of us, well, five of us, working and developing a new line of color and new products um, so, you know, I stay very active, even to be in this business for so long. I, I don't rest on the fact that I'm busy. I don't rest, rest on the fact that I have a booking of people coming in. Uh, I still educate myself. That's the key. The key word is educate yourself, and I don't care how you do it. In, in the last year and a half, I've been to Montreal. I've been uh, to um, Italy, to Cosmoprof Italy, to the biggest show in the world, 260,000 people there. Um, we've been to uh, Orlando. I worked at Premier Orlando for, um, you know, for Antidot Pro. And I just think that, and I hope y'all agree that education is the key. And I know that y'all wouldn't be doing this if you didn't agree. And, and I don't care what kind of education it is, y'all. I don't care if it's going to Italy like I did or if it's going on YouTube at night mm -hmm. while you're sitting eating popcorn or something and, and learning something. You know, we, we have to learn, we have to educate, we have to expand. What I'm going to talk about tonight and what I want to talk about tonight is that we need to self-analyze. Uh, I think one of the things that really ticks me off the worst is hearing people in our professions talking bad about the place where they work talking bad about their co-workers, talking bad about their boss, mm -hmm. talking bad about anything at all. And, and I think that that is probably one of the worst things that a person can do because it, in my eyes, it makes them look like uh, just so small and so petty. So I, I think that we need to all self-analyze and then we need to reboot. You know, I self-analyze every day. Every day, you know, uh, I, I'm not immune to problems. I'm not immune to personal things going wrong. I'm not immune to the world closing in on me, you know, and, and it certainly does, especially at my age, because I'm starting to think about the future, you know, when I retire and things like this, you know, I, I'm beginning to think about that. But I make sure that when I pull up in front of my salon, every single day that no matter what's happening in my life no matter what's going on i'll leave it in my car mm -hmm. you know i don't walk to my front door and open my front door and carry it inside my business with me and i mean i don't care how big it is and people say oh you can't do that yes you can you know yes you can you know you have to do that to be successful you know uh when I leave at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever time I leave and walk out the door, I may pick it back up as soon as I walk in the car and deal with it then. But I am not going to deal with it at work. I am not going to to obsess with it, and I'm not going to, to you know, pile it on to my salon guests that are sitting there paying me and feeding me and clothing me and providing me with with the essentials of life, I, I'm not going to do that to those people. So people say, how, how do you do this? How do you self-analyze? Well, you get brutal. You just get brutal with yourself to the point that sometimes you just have to break yourself down over it. You know, you just have to, to really get down to the ABCs. You just have to really decide what's going on. If you're having problems at work, figure out what they are. I mean, instead of blaming someone, really delve into it and figure out what it is. Nine times out of ten, people are so shocked that when they do this, they find out they're the problem. Mm -hmm. Their attitude. 
You know, I mean, it's the truth. I mean, you know, we don't like to, you know, we don't like to be honest with ourselves, do we? You know, I mean, we we have to be honest with ourselves. You know, I mean, uh, it, it can be brutal. It can be, it can absolutely tear us to shreds when we do it. But to be successful, we have to, you know, like I said, I self-analyze every day. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I will say, okay, this head of hair, could I have done anything any different? Could I, next time, do I need to add something to the notes here in this book that next time, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, I analyze every single thing. It doesn't take long, maybe two or three minutes, you know, but I assure you and I guarantee you, if you start doing this at the end of every single day, you're going to be better. You're going to elevate yourself. You know, you're going to get where you want to go. Um, and reboot, you know, reboot simply means maybe you need to have an attitude adjustment. Reboot your attitude. Reboot your thought process. Reboot the way you treat the people who are paying you. Well, that's one of the hardest things, uh, Steve, is is definitely understanding uh, who, you know, in life, um, who you are as a person. I think that's one of the biggest challenges in people's lives. So I, I really definitely applaud you for saying that, you know, um, it takes a, a, a really uh, a, a certain person, though, to be able to step back and analyze themselves. So I think this is a great, you know, a great thing that you're you're touching up upon, especially in the hairstylist and barbering world, because like you said, there comes with a lot of there are some rotten apples that can ruin the bunch mm -hmm. so and, and doing this th this type of self analyzing is definitely going to be key and i applaud you for for uh, for touching on this it's key to everything you know and i don't care how big you are i don't care if you are you have millions of followers on instagram or if you have five followers on instagram every single one of us is subject to absolutely becoming tarnished mm -hmm. yep you know, and, you know, they make all kinds of polishers, all kinds of things to get that tarnish off. But you know what the best thing to get it off? Wow. Just a good scrubbing. A good scrubbing. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So we have to scrub ourselves, you know, and no matter how painful it is, you know. And, and it's just, you know, that, that's just a touchy subject with me because sometimes people are so, just so arrogant, y'all. And you know this. Mm -hmm. I. I you know, I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm not saying anything. I'm not trying to be, you know, make anyone sound bad. But sometimes people are just arrogant and they don't deserve to be arrogant. That's true. You know, a lot of people have become insta, insta famous. And that's just mm -hmm. what the word is. You know, And that's great. Not a thing wrong with this. But everyone needs to remember that those 10 million people that follow them are the ones who made them insta famous. Right. You know, and that's just, I mean, you know, that's just something we need to remember. You know, I've got under 3,000 followers on Instagram. I've, I'm happy for that. You know, I'm tickled. I, I don't aspire to have millions of followers. You know, that has never been my thing. If you do, that's great. But remember how you got those millions of followers. Mm -hmm. nice. You know, every now and then. I talked about this last week. You know, if you're continually getting likes and likes and likes and likes, and all of a sudden I see a picture of yours that's got three million likes, and I grant you it's going to be beautiful work. But, you know, then I start looking, hmm, you've never liked one of my pictures. <laughs> you know, then maybe you need to, I've got this saying that I've always said, it's just a Southern thing. Sometimes you need to throw, throw the dog a bone. <laughs> I want to know. So, okay. I, I may be the dog. Throw me a like. Yeah, absolutely. Right. absolutely. I mean, right, that's all right, about right, supporting, right. and that's what this absolutely. industry should be all about. It's definitely supporting each other. We have to support. You know, I've got terms, y'all, that I say all the time, and I tell people on Hair Church, and I always say this just because I say something doesn't mean it's the truth. For you, it's my truth. You know, just because I say something doesn't mean you have to enact it in your life, it's enacted in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain terms that I like and I dislike. That's personal. Uh, you know, there's a big thing now in, in, our, in our profession saying we need to lift each other up. No, I don't want anyone to lift me up. If I fall down on my face in the dirt, you let me get up on my own strength, but you be there to help me by my side. 
And you be there when I start taking those first two, two or three steps again to make sure, and I'm wobbling, that I don't fall back down. But don't reach down and pick me up. Let me get up so I'll remember the strength it took to get up. Preach, Steve. You know, you let me remember what it took to get from the bottom where I fell to to get back up. Don't just reach down and pick me up and say, oh, they didn't They didn't mean this. They didn't mean what they said. No, no. Let, let me do it on my own. You know, help me. Another word I don't like is industry. And y'all, this always sets people's tongues wagging when I say this. And I'm just as personal. I just don't like that term because we're professionals. We are members of a profession. Mm -hmm. Not a thing wrong with being a member of, of an industry, you know, of the coal mining industry, the auto manufacturing industry. But I, I kind of like to be in that profession where all of these professional people are that have to go to school, that have to get licensed and have to take tests and, you know, and do things like this. I, I kind of like that. You know, so I, I call that a Steveism. Those things get me in trouble sometimes when I talk about <laughs> Steveism. You know? But, you know, those are just, there again, that's me. That's just personal. You know, I mean, um, during my 42 years, I have owned five salons. I've had so many employees, it was crazy. I'm down now to just me, and I love being just me. Um, I have taught school in every educational format a person can teach from secondary to post-secondary, private schools, community college, high school. You know, um, I have taught for companies, private education, to the point of now doing private education with my best friend, Vinica Shopi. Um, and, you know, she teaches un under the heading of Seeing Beauty. And, and we, you know, I go with her as her special guest and we teach. Um, you know, we've got a class coming up in Roswell, Georgia, August 27th, you know, and um, I just think that, you know, nowadays there's so many options for us to educate. Right. That I mean, and be educated. You know, when I get off here tonight, uh, the last, nearly the last two hours of every night before I close my eyes and go to sleep, I'm on YouTube watching something. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a haircut. I'm yeah. looking at a color. I'm doing something. Uh, that's great. You know, you well, know, for and listen, friends, you, we stay as a student. I'm, that's right. You have to. I mean, you know, y'all, and, and something that that we take for granted nowadays is that you know we've got to remember that. Whereas I say I'm 60 years old, and I'm proud to be 60 years old. Um, I didn't have this when I was 20 years old. I didn't have this when I was 30 years old. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have the Internet. Right. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I didn't have these options, so I had to go. I had to travel. I had to go to shows, classes, things like this that cost me tons of money. You don't have to spend money to be educated today. Very, very nicely said. All right, so Steve, uh, we're starting to run out of time. So what sure. I want to know is, I, uh, my thing is, uh, you know, you've been you've been involved in the hair industry for so long. Uh, where do you see your you know your career going uh, from here on? Well, you know, I have a wish that I don't die while I've got a color on somebody's hair at work. <laughs> that's that's my biggest wish, you know. But though that certainly would make a, a good exit, you know, I, I want to work as long as I can work. I want to promote this pr profession every single day. I want to help people understand that this is more than a job. And if it's just a job, you need to reevaluate yourself. Mm -hmm. nice. You know, this is a profession. This is a, a, where you can support yourself and you can support yourself well. You want to be a superstar, you can be a superstar, either in your hometown, nationally or internationally. It's all up to you and it's all right here and it has to come from right here. <laughs> you know, that's where it has to come from. Uh, I, I want to see everyone last 40 years, 42 years, 50 years. You know, that that's what I want. I want to see my companies that I represent grow and grow and grow. I, I want to see my friends achieve every single thing they want to achieve and so that's just it you know i, I want to work as long as i can work um uh, in my little salon you know i want to travel as much as i can travel i want to just do everything i mean i guess that's saying a lot but that's just it i want to do it all very very nicely said all right so steve the ambassador the educator the self-analyst <laughs> the very active 
successful stylist cosmetologists. We want to say thank you and scissors, scissors salute. salute Steve. Before you go, let people people know where they can find you uh, on social media. Yeah. On Instagram, I'm hair hair dot guy dot Steve. On Facebook, it's Steve Vandiver. Um, every Tuesday night, I'm doing Hair Church and Hairdressers Advice for Hairdressers, which is a group. If you're not a member, do a member request. We will approve you. And I hope y'all like this. And I hope to make this um, a rather regular feature of coming back and doing Hair Church. So I appreciate the invitation. Um, and we hope to do it again real soon. And everyone, scissors loot and have a great Salute. work week. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for joining Steve's us. Steve Van Diver. Thank you. Van Diver, Bye -bye, that's right. Hair.guy.steve. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank and you. Now on the cut cam, who do we have up there? Chiquita. Showing his skills. He's showing his skills up on stage. Okay, so uh, before we start showcasing uh, 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 what we're doing up on stage, guys, I failed to mention that I actually had uh, uh, an article written um Actually, can you see it? No, they're not. They're not actually watching me. Well, I, okay, so so I had uh, the uh, the honor, which was a surprise to me, which I did not even know. I just had a uh, an article written on me. Uh, here we go, guys. Right over here, it's an old photo they had of me, and which was a surprise. Um, I was actually um, sent the request a long time ago, and, and this um, says a salute to Linda from Graphitch. Uh, so from Graphitch, uh, she has the colored uh, pencils, but she also definitely she opened up her own. It's called Men'sEyeliner.com. Okay, where men actually are wearing eyeliner these days, and a lot of times, you know, I am a platform artist. Okay, mm -hmm. that's my. Right. All right. So uh, what I'll do is, you know, to to really go into my character, a lot of times I'll put eyeliner underneath my eyes to kind of give me more of that mysterious uh, look. And in this article, they wrote uh, something about me uh, speaking about that. And uh, do you want me to sp you want to read some of it? All right. So uh, they they uh, ex they they describe me as Harry Houdini, New York uh, City based Babyless Pro master barber by day and DJ by night. And it says that I find that wearing eyeliner lets me transform into my mysterious side. It allows me to play my character better and stand out from the crowd. I feel strong, bold, and unique. And it's just something I wanted to share with you guys. It kind of was cool. Scissor salute to was that. Cool. Scissor Scissor salute salute. to that. So, mm -hmm. um, and also scissor salute to uh, Linda from Graphitch uh, uh, Pencils for uh, for actually um, making sure that my my uh, this article came out. And uh, it's really really cool. So what we got? You're doing a lot. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm all over the place here. It, you know, it's it's really good to actually have one night off because normally I'm working right now. So I'm actually able to chill right here with you guys and have fun. Glad to to have you back. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cool. So what we got up on the cut cam? What do we have there? That's Chiquita showing us. What What are we doing, Chiquita? What? Um, Chiquita has his model. A fresh tail cut. Okay. A fade. You want to get him on mic? Okay, so he's fading with a razor blade and a comb. Yeah. All right, so he's really going traditional on this one, and that's really, really cool. I mean, a, a technique that took me many years to perfect using just the blade of the clipper and the comb. Unbelievable. And he is using a straight edge razor. I use it now for the razor blade to line at the back of this. The ridge behind is from his ears to his neck string with a bare razor blade. Which in you soften the hair so it make it much more softer and much more easy for you to take it off quickly like that. So if you come closer with your with your um, with your phone, everybody, you will see what I'm doing. So Okay. We have time. We can go over it. So I soften it, the hair of itself. I come on. You gotta get somebody to be coming here. Okay, so Steve's gonna call right. Steve will come close. So I'm gonna line it. Was it Steve? Yeah, Steve. That's the student. 
Yeah. There's a student? All right. Got a lot of and the other guy could not break him. He's like a... He's tough, man. I want to bring you up on the mic. I feel like you're just like lower than me. Oh, yeah. It's the same kind of low, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they could still hear us on the mic. might as well get it for the system. might as well get it for your footage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good at this. Who am I? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I've only done it like once or twice. Yeah, you're good. You know how to get right in there. I sent you the flyer to that brown thing. Okay, yeah, because so I want to try to go. Thank you. Don't be afraid to, you know, nudge me or whatever. Okay. You know, I don't like to be too, like, the one. You know what I mean? I want to oh, make no, no, sure you get your shine you, also. No, you are, you are the man tonight. <laughs> yeah, for real. Now I'm going to talk in your thing. I'm going to talk to you. Samantha Jean. <laughs> so we're on the other side, right? And you want to have a time. I'm saying this. He's using the comb and the razor to fade. Wow. Wow, wow. Are we are we on? Can they hear us? You gotta sit you gotta sit up What a you know, I mean I gotta you know, I give a lot of respect to people who, you know, who have been cutting hair many years because they have these type of techniques that are just I don't I, what's the word? It's not they have that antique style, right. that classic style, that, classic that style. real, you know, because I look at a lot of barbering nowadays right. as very modern and, you know, I'm using modern like clippers. It. Can you hear him? I'm using modern yeah. clippers. Mm -hmm. I'm using, you know, state of the art uh, tools. And to see when he's using this type of, you know, uh, the style of cutting is really um, where it started. Mm -hmm. It's where it started. You know, it, it's very old. I want to say old school. It really is an old school way of, mm -hmm. of, but I mean, it doesn't mean that old school doesn't work. You know what I mean? Th those techniques still work to this right, day. Right. Um, there are different, you know, tools that you can use now that maybe can give you um, the same results. But this was like back in the day. This is was the way to do it. That must be. Okay, so we got somebody calling in. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, you take this, okay? Scissor salute. Scissor salute, Shap. Thanks for calling in. What's up? So this is to you as well. How you doing? Pretty good. Good. How about yourself? yourself? Yeah, we're good. We're here waiting to talk to you. So I got a chance <laughs> to to talk to you a little bit earlier, and your story is very inspiring because you were a construction worker for 10 years, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Probably over that, probably about 12 years. So. Oh, wow. Okay. And what made you start cutting? Well, I used to cut hair when I played sports in high school, but uh, my mom, she was uh, worked in a beauty shop. My wife's been doing hair since I met her, and uh, I just I was lucky enough to get a chance to do it, so I, I've been doing it, and I love it. All right, so who inspired you, your mom or, or, your, uh, or, or your girlfriend? His wife. Oh, I'm sorry, your wife. His wife. <laughs> Big difference. Um, I just think I... I we're we own a salon right now, so we got into the into the that she's been in the industry. Now we're business owners, and for our family, you know, becoming a barber for me was the flexible schedule. You know, the the good money that you can make, and uh, the networking and the people and all the stuff that gets involved with being a barber was uh, exciting to me. So I was lucky enough to, to get a grant and uh, you know pay the rest of my tuition and. That's what I got going on. Okay. And you just started this year, right? So when we spoke, you said you had taken your written exam today. I took my written on Friday. Okay. It was, uh, it was a 100-question test, firm rounds, and a color application. And uh, today was uh, 
was my, my practical haircut and shave. Right, and then we find out the results next week, right? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. So now it's just the waiting oh, game. look at that, look at that. Guy. My question to you, <laughs> my question to you is... Yeah, he's adorable. Beautiful son you have. He's adorable. Uh, my question to you is how do you feel that you did on this on this test? Uh, I'm actually I'm actually real real confident right now in myself. I mean, I the school I went to is probably one of the best schools in Arizona. Uh, they prepare you really well. So I mean, you got you get two hours a day uh, on the books, and the rest of the time you're cutting. And uh, you know, it's it's basically five. It could take five questions out of twenty chapters. So uh, I th I feel pretty good on that. And then the perm rods I banged out, the color application I do my wife here and there. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. And then. Uh, you know, it's just a regular gentleman's cut, taper, skin taper in the back, and, you know, a cut all the way around the head and a, a normal head, like a, a regular shave, and I feel good on, about all that stuff, so. Good. I'm very happy for you. Yeah. Very, very happy for you. Um, how many hours for barber school was it for you? Uh, 1,500 hours, actually. Yeah, wow, they have 15. Wow, that's really mm -hmm. a lot. That is yeah. definitely, I mean, here in New York, it is 500, uh, so it's yeah. definitely a big difference. But yeah. you know what? That's, he is educated that much more mm -hmm. than we are. So that's great. That's really well, the, yeah, the, the, the head of the barber board in Arizona is, is a national member, too. So I don't know if like, he's trying to raise the bar, set the standard, but I think it's Arizona and California have the most hours, I believe, to, get, to become a barber. Wow. So what, what's what been your biggest challenge um, attending barber school? I just think it's the, it's like before it's work, so you have the work-life balance with your family. But then with school, it's the same thing. It's like you're not, you're not really, if you haven't, if you didn't save money to, to go to barber school mm -hmm. or you didn't get help to go to barber school, then, I mean, obviously finances, but I think it's just the balance of just your family and going to school and, and obviously the age gap for me, I was the oldest person being 32 and I got kids, most of them are 19, 18, 19 years old. So I'd already worked and been through kind of the trenches and these kids, so it, was, so it wasn't like I was making a whole lot of friends, if that makes <laughs> sense. But they all, they all looked at me like I was the dad or like the old man or something. So it was, it was kind of a, a culture shock as well. But it was, it was really, really good. It was like one of the most humbling things I've ever done. And it's, it's been a blessing and... And, uh, you know, I don't want to let my wife down. I don't want to let my kids down. So I got a lot of motivation to kick butt. Yeah, good man. Good man. So, cool. do you, so now, now, you know, you, you used to do construction, right? He said yeah. you did construction. Mm -hmm. What type of construction was it? I was a concrete cutter. So I started out, I cut concrete, and then uh, I actually was a superintendent and a foreman. So I went for making really good money. But I was gone a lot. So, I mean, it's it's hard. Like I said, you get you get established you just establish money and it's hard to leave that but if like for me like i said my motivation is my family so becoming a barber made it better for me to be a better father like and it's just you, it, you, you have you can get clientele you can work the days you want to work you can take off time if you need to like if if i needed to leave or do anything in my prior employment i would be fired or they'd be mad or whatever i'd always have to be explaining myself this way, I, I make my own money, work for myself, and do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know what? You mentioned having to pay for barber school, um, which I'm glad you touched on because I, I actually I will be starting barber school soon. What was that like? I mean, do they offer financial aid since it's 1,500 hours in Arizona, or did you kind of have to pay out of pocket for those classes? I got a grant. Yeah, they have a, it's called the Workforce Initiative Act. I don't know if it's a nationwide or it's, it's, it's different than FAFSA, but it's an actual grant. So you, you got to go down to this office, explain to them why you need this money. They make you go through a bunch of stuff. You got to go meet, uh, put a different barber, sh barber shops and have them write letters that they'd be willing to hire you and do a bunch of research and print out some stuff. And then they actually do like a social worker. And she stays with you the duration of your uh, of your schooling. Oh, okay. Each month she checks in with you. But they actually write you a check for half of your barber school right off the bat. It's a grant. Never have to get paid back again. So oh, wow. in Arizona, I was lucky enough to get that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, just my school is All-American Barber Academy. Anybody in Arizona listening, the best school. The teachers, the owners, the instructors are awesome. They're fle like flexible. 
and I was able to negotiate, you know, getting much, like paying and doing stuff. So they worked with me. I mean, it, it, I was lucky for that. So I think if you had a strict person that needed money this day, first of the month, it probably wouldn't have worked for me. <laughs> okay, yeah, you were definitely blessed because um, they don't offer us that much help <laughs> in New York, which I'm finding out now. Yeah, so. you know, and another thing that you know he's 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 he said was that he he really feels you know happy to have gone to that school because, you know, uh, I went to a school that really didn't they didn't really care much about you know um, producing good quality barbers they just kind of wanted you to know the basics to you know to pass the test and you know when you have a school that really uh, teaches you and really dives into the fundamentals and you know you know that when you get out of there you're a really solid you know. A quality barber it's just a different feeling as opposed to you know having somebody that can pass the test but doesn't really know the the, the terminology the new school styling of, of, of haircuts you know I mean I think that's that's huge you know and I the fact that he's representing his his uh, barber school and he feels proud to have gone to that school is, is great yeah yeah I mean every every all the alumni or however you put it everybody that graduates i mean they're right off the bat making over a g a week right out of barber school 60 mm, 40 so to that. and er, so everybody definitely. yeah everybody <laughs> like e everyone all the students like everybody that was before me and even now like guys are going out they're so happy everybody's so happy because we cut we're cutting 10 to 15 people a day and that's with going to class too because they do six dollar haircuts seven dollar mm -hmm. haircuts so i mean i think it's a, a haircut and a shave is like 11 dollars or something so it's a real busy school, and you're cutting all the time. So, I, I mean, if you don't know how to cut by the time you leave school, then you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, Steve, this is Seth Rowe. Real quick, um, before we wrap up the interview, I, I want to make sure, uh, first of all, Sister Salute, Memphis. Um, yeah, you? she's here. I'm in the car. <laughs> oh, Sister Salute. We, 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 we got to get her back on. We got to get her um, to call back in soon. And I definitely want you guys to, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about your salon uh, before we wrap it up. Absolutely. Yeah, it's called Black Cadillac Salon. It's in Peoria, Arizona. Uh, they, my wife and her business partner got, in, got involved together and they opened up a shop. I uh, started out about nine stations uh, with some stuff, kind of some family stuff going on. We, uh, I can't really go out and work for a shop right now. So, I mean, why wouldn't I want to invest money into the shop? So now we're going to actually split the shop down the middle and put barber chairs on the other side. So it's going to now be Black Cadillac Salon and Barber Shop. Excellent so construction idea. Will be, yeah, it'll begin Excellent probably this week, and uh, we'll, we'll get that stuff all carried in. So we'll, we'll be working together, hopefully, and it'll work out. <laughs> Excellent. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's what they say, man. You put your mind to something, you can definitely make it, you know, make it work. The key for you guys is to work great as partners. I mean, you know, uh, the fact that you're splitting it in two is just definitely going to excel the uh, the barbershop salon into just a, another, uh, just a whole nother level. So um, we definitely wish you the best of success, and uh, we want to wish you a salute. Thank you so much. Uh, but before you go, just uh, give us your social media information, um, and how can we find you? Yeah, you can check me out, Chef Barber, on Instagram. I'm still kind of new to everything else, so I'm just on Instagram right now. Uh, Black Salon and Barber Shop. My wife is uh, Memphis Mains, and uh, we'll be out here in Arizona taking care of business. So, uh, yeah, holler at me. <laughs> so, a salute to that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Right on. Thank you, guys. Take it easy. His son's hey, trying girl. to say scissor salute in the background. He's trying <laughs> to say <laughs> it. His son's That's trying right. to say hey, scissor, 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 scissor salute. You see it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steven. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. No for problem. We'll, we'll be in touch. All right. Take care. All right. All right. So back up on the live cam, we have the one and only Chiquita using some old school techniques, that, but very effective, guys. And uh, I really uh, wish we can get kind of a close up on that. Too, though. I'd like to get a, a close up on it, uh, the technique that he's using, but, you know, um, Keep, uh, definitely keep keep close watch to that, guys. Anybody who's yeah, there, it is right there. If we can turn him to the side, that'd be great. Chiquita, can you uh, check out the the uh, live cam and just uh, point it over to the camera so they can see what you're doing? Just turn turn your model just a little bit. There you go. Mm, that's wow, look clean. how nice. Very very nice and clean. This here footage is made on the comb to fraction of one eighth. Oh, yeah. 
Forty dollar horizontal parlor. Okay. And so I can get my feet in. He's got the blade on the comb. Right. Yep, it's a blade, blade on the comb. Blade you know, they they have they have um, nowadays. Uh, Paul Mitchell actually, um, there, there's Paul Mitchell didn't come out with it. Um, the guy's name is uh, Barry Scott, and you can find uh, those th that they actually you can insert a blade into it, and it's the same kind of uh, technique that he's using. Donald Scott, thank you, Donald Scott uh, 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 razor combs, and I don't know if you can. I don't know if it'll get that low though. That's the only thing I know. We they, wouldn't get this low like how I do it. You wouldn't get that low. <laughs> so they have invented something like that, but just not You're as like, close. No. <laughs> you know, and definitely I would say anybody who utilizes this technique has to be very, very careful also. You know. <laughs> so. Yes. What? Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Yep, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, we are. And guys, right next to me is the lovely, the beautiful Samantha. Hello. How are you, Samantha? I'm well. How are you? Is this close I, enough I should to get me? in there, girl. Get Hello. in there. Hello. All right, great. Oh, this is good. exciting. I think they can hear you. I think so. Okay, good. That's the main we'll find thing. find out. Yep, we put up your level. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so, 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 um, we have some questions for you because you are a lot of things, okay? You have a lot of avenues um, that you available to you as a hairstylist um, but you call yourself a freelance artist am I correct I'm like yeah I'm a free I'm a freelance hairstylist hair artist I do pretty much anything you would need so color cuts extensions up styling on location in the salon more or less if you need your hair done I will facilitate that that's more or less what it is I like that I like Thank that you. okay so <laughs> So on top of the fact that you are a freelance artist, you cut hair, you style hair, you color hair, do you do any chemical services? I do. I do a lot of, well, I don't want to say necessarily chemical services as far as keratins and things like that. I do a lot of these Olaplex treatments, which I'm actually qualifying now almost as a chemical service in the sense that it is able to restructure the hair in a way that we haven't really had before in the past available to us and it's not even like that's the only one now there's so many bond rebuilders and stuff like that so i'm really into those um you know i do i do a bunch especially blonding um i do a lot of blonding so i use it i use it a lot post service for that so very very nice so i could feel the passion when you speak and you know on uh, when i was watching you uh, on stage, I could t definitely tell you're passionate about this industry. Uh, I want to know who got you into this business. Okay, so I mean, I started off similar to a couple of the stylists we interviewed today, like in my family's business. So we had a shop right in East Northport. I mean, my grandma, excuse me, my great aunt actually had that shop since the 70s. So as soon as I was tall enough to reach the sink, I was shampooing. I was like, sweeping you know like child labor in the salon she paid me good but i was working <laughs> you know what i mean we did <laughs> but i was learning and i was watching my cousin and um it was always very important to be professional and to make sure that the clients came first and a lot of the stuff you know that chiquita was touching on were like a lot of the same values that i grew up with so it was nice to hear him speak because um, it brings a lot of value to our profession because it really is you know, it really is a very professional industry. It's not as fly by night as I think some people think it is. You know. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely professional. I mean, is where you sh what you should be. You know, right. I think that's great. But there are some people yeah, out there that uh, kind of take it as a as a joke and you know, and use it as a job. Uh, and that, that that's where there's two different types of stylists. There are ones that, you know, take it seriously and others that just consider it, you know, just a, a job. But mm -hmm. I feel that those are the types that don't have longevity. Correct. How long have you been uh, cutting and styling hair? Okay, so I would probably say since about 2007. Um, it wasn't full time. It was definitely something that I did on the side. I always had like a little side hustle of hair going on. Anybody that knew me knew I would go to your house and do your hair. Um, and all of my background was from growing up in the salon. Um, you know, I was selling insurance. I worked in sales. I had, you know, a strong professional background. And I realized this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing, you know. So I switched it up, did hair full time, and everything's going well. Like everything that I, all the skills that I had from the business end, I'm applying. So I definitely recommend for stylists to take a business class. Um, 
get a get a side job, get a part time job at a bank or something. You know what I mean? Something professional. Some, not to say professional, to but you, you get what I'm saying. Hump. Yeah, something right. Just to get you doing something else. You know, I really had. Um, I've worked with a lot of stylists that have never had another job, so to speak, and those are the stylists that I sometimes feel could. Like going back to what Steve was saying as far as self-accountability and like things like that, when you work in a corporate environment for someone else and like you're financially accountable and you have sales goals to meet and you have these things to consider, it puts you in a different mindset. Right. A lot of the time we're very lax and we're artists and we are people people. So we're thinking, you know, in terms of having fun and making our clients feel comfortable. We're not always thinking in terms of business and professionalism. So right. and sales, you know, Absolutely. so that's why I think sometimes it wouldn't be a terrible idea for you even just to yeah, take a business class or get some work not like experience, you know, because sometimes that's cheaper and okay. more valuable than a class, exactly. you know, <laughs> so Absolutely. yeah, no, I like that. So I'm glad you've been able to discover your passion in this industry absolutely you know, since i was little it's like my favorite really, thing uh, that's really really good so now you're <laughs> full force now you're, you're full force in there good to go and you're currently working at armani and alex barbershop mm -hmm. um i know where that is on route 110 yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I, we, I, I know where that is in awesome. Melbourne. um what is it like working in a barbershop but also doing you know um these type of uh services like you know, I mean, is it, is it kind of awkward or no, what's that is it like? a great question. I love this question. So I started off in my first barbershop in Bayshore in Brentwood. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the area, but it was right on the cusp of Brightwaters, which is a more affluent, you know, kind of like bougie area. Everybody's nice, you know, doing well there. So I figured I'm like, OK, I can be in this area and I can kind of drum up some business from Brightwaters. A lot of my clients are already in Bayshore anyway, so let's see what we could do. And that's when I realized they had um they had a separate area in the back for a few stylists. And they had almost like a barbershop salon environment. And that's where I first realized that these two worlds can coexist really well. And I would actually go up in the front for moms that had their kids. And I would go to the front and I would say, look, I'm like, you're sitting, you got two sons, like barbershops, we're always waiting. You know what I mean? It's like, you, well, you hope to have people waiting. You hope that you're busy enough where you have people just constantly waiting around. That's what I hope for everyone. God bless us all. So like, you know, while the moms are waiting, I'm like, come back, let me blow out your hair. Even if the first time it was free. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not going to say I never did that. I did walk up and I would say, look, I'm going to give you this first blowout free. Come get a haircut. Come get something. Let me dust it. You know, touch their hair. Be like, oh, you're beautiful. Come, come see me in the back. You know, try to get them to come back. And I realized like, all right, yes, this can work. Um, I ended up leaving there. I found Armani and Alex. They are just a really small little spot. It's four chairs, so it's three barbers and myself. So it's way more private. I'm able to focus on each client one-on-one, -on -one, so they love it. They love, like, the intimacy of that. It's like I'm not focused on ten other women. <laughs> drama is going on in the salon. That doesn't exist because it's a barbershop. There's a bunch of TVs. You know, so it's great. It's not really awkward. It's kind of cool. The guys love having the girls there. I'm able to, you know... I'm able to drum up business by the moms bringing their sons in, you know, so it kind of works. It works well. Very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I myself have uh, done the opposite. I've worked at hair salons, but me uh, being uh, mostly a barber mm -hmm. because I do women's hair, but I am about 80 percent men. Right. Um, have done the opposite. So I know what it's like. It's, I'm like you, but opposite. Yeah, because right. I can like work my way around a men's <laughs> haircut. I could do all right, you know. So. Uh, very, very, uh, you know, it feels great to be uh, next to someone who kind of shares the, you know, we, we share the same kind of uh, passion. And, Definitely. And, this, and the, the, the craft is pretty much uh, almost identical. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I definitely feel that you love this hair world. Uh, what is it that really um, that you love? Like, what is it that mo you love most about this hair world? I love the artistry of it. I love the impact on people, the individual. I love that, okay, so when I was young, I was a musician, actually. <laughs> so, and I used to love about music. Yeah, I, cool, yeah. Because, well, the mu music and hair is one and the same, so I'm going to get into it. Okay. So, I felt always that the great thing about performing was that it was never the same twice, right? And I feel the same about hair. I feel like, you know, you're making this client feel great, that's all well, but at the end of the day, it's a visual result you're trying to achieve right an aesthetic result so this is never going to be the same like you can try to execute it the same but there's going to be elements of this that are different every time so i think that that is an amazing Absolutely. thing 
And that is something that I find to be challenging. Yeah. And it's important for me personally to be challenged in my day to day or else I feel like the day is kind of a waste, you know. So I think that that's probably the the biggest aspect of it that draws me to it, I think, time and time again, you know. That's good. You know, I, I, I'm the same. I, mean, I'm t- I'm, I think I don't know. It's kind of interesting because I feel the same way. I don't like being complacent. No, it's a, um, a lot of people in our business. And I do love the challenges of every uh, client being somewhat a little bit different. different yeah. You know, and I like you have to that. be flexible. And it's always a challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, so definitely the, the hair industry as a whole, there there is, you know, there's so much that, that could be said about um, just you know, loving, you know, so, I mean, it's really, really It great. is, and we love the people. Like, if if you don't love your client in your chair, you're in the wrong business, you know? Absolutely. So, mm-hmm, that's that my best true. day. I never work any day, but I work seven days a week. <laughs> so. Well, I used to work six, okay? I'm down to five now. Oh, good actually. for you, buddy. Yeah. That's yeah, great. I, I'm down to five, okay? That's what, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm here today. I love it. But, uh, but you know, um, would you ever, you know, I know you do men's hair. I know you fade men's mm-hmm. hair. Would you ever think about, because I feel like this might be something you're missing. Yeah. Is uh, would, would you ever think about shaving, uh, getting into the shaving aspect? I would, especially because I work with Russian barbers, and they're amazing with the straight razor. They're like an artist. And honestly, my hair is like nine months overgrown. I haven't had a haircut in literally too long. But my favorite part is when Alex, he's like my favorite barber at my shop. You didn't hear me say it. So salute to Alex. Thank you. <laughs> so, and he like, you know, with the straight razor on my neck, I'm like, oh my God, it's my, like my favorite thing i would love to learn but i just i haven't yet but i would love to that's okay yeah. and you know and i applaud you for being open to wanting yeah. to learn you know i think that's one of the biggest steps in, in uh, becoming a uh, a hairstylist barber is to want to want to learn you know there's a need for it so yep um i want to say thank you so much thank I you really so do. much for I having thank you me. for showcasing on stage with us um you know, you've been a great person to me, and I definitely want to stay in touch with you, you know, in the future. I think we can do an amazing collaboration. Cool. You know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, you're somebody definitely to watch in the future. So just Thank keep you. developing yourself, <laughs> keep evolving, and you're going to be somebody great. Really, oh, really great. Thank you so much. So, appreciate so it. Salute to you. So salute. So salute Thanks, to you. guys. Appreciate it. So, all right. <laughs> so before we go, um, I, I want the uh, the viewers that are watching to uh, how can we find you? I mean, we know where to find you at the salon, but okay. social media wise, how can we find you to watch you work? Okay, so my Facebook page is Hair by Samantha Jean. There's a there's a colon, so it's Hair by colon Samantha oh, Jean. Boy. Some people have a hard time, so All I have right. to correct that, okay. but that's it. My Instagram is Samantha Jean Hairstylist. So it's easy. That's it. That's Not cool. too bad. Well, on behalf of uh, Houdini, I want to say thank you thank once you again. Thank you so much. This thank was you, so thank fun. You. Thank you. Thank and, you. And um, right now we're gonna get back to the cut cam. And see how. Nineteen ninety six, you know, he was charged with uh... I watched this dude change his life, man. Just growing up being a silly kid with my brother, just wanted to be a different kid and have fun, make my mom, my grandma proud, stay out their way for the news, the music videos, actually being in motion pictures. Just wanted to think outside the box and be different than everybody else. For the fans and the supporters, wanted to build my own brand. Being a barber, he's one of the most inspirational people I've known. The man runs marathons, he raises great kids, he gives the young homies advice.
right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everyone who watched the Scissor Salute show here today. And, um, you know, I, I'm really honored to be here once again. And you don't forget, guys, to check out my hats that I worked so hard for and I created. Um, it was a dream uh, that came true, honestly. Uh, www.houdinistyle.com. That's where the H um, is where you can find them. Please follow me. Houdini Style. H-O-U-D-I-N-I-S-T-Y-L-E. I, -I, -I, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to hand over the mic and uh, just uh, let let you guys uh, kind of sound off, okay? Hold on. I'm going to pass it over to my, to my, yeah, to you. Samantha, here you go. All right. I'm Samantha Jean. Scissor salute. What else am I supposed to say? That's it. Thank you. Ladies and blush, scissor salute. Scissor salute to my co-host. Harry the Houdini, thanks for having me on as a co-host. I had a great time as usual. And Scissor Salute, my name is Patrick Washington Campbell, well known as Tricky Tuck. 917, Finish Church Barbershop. God bless everybody who come here today and make it possible. On behalf of Houdini, my boy Sci-Fi, and everybody, and Samantha. <laughs> And Yvette, may God bless you all, keep up the good works, and it's an honor being here, and I would always be here. Just, just call me and I will be here. <laughs> salute to the barber, salute. Barber salute. All right, so guys, uh, for the people who called in, we want to say thank you to Steve. Uh, who else called in? Shap, Shap, we wish you the best of luck and success with your uh, with your new endeavor. And um, we want to also thank our model here today, Lou the Phagician, for allowing us to uh, showcase him. So thank you and scissor salute to you. And, all right, so on the count of three, guys, we're going to do a scissor salute sound off as uh, Eli would do. And I want to thank, uh, I want to scissor salute Eli. For, um, he's not here today, but I'm taking after him. All right, so on a count of three, everybody, you got to raise your voices real loud, okay? So when I say scissor, you say salute. Are you ready? One, two, three. Scissor! Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. Scissor salute.